Rule number 86. The main clause of an indirect statement is an infinitive with a subject accusative, while all subordinate clauses take the subjunctive. As we wrap up the final rules of Latin in this series, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about indirect discourse, or oratio obliqua. We've touched upon this very important and complex topic already in Rule 39 about the subject accusative and Rule 69 on infinitives. The general theme of the next four rules, that is Rule 86 through 89, will be less about its individual parts and more about the clause itself. Let's talk about indirect discourse by comparing it to its opposite. A direct quotation gives the exact words of the original writer or speaker, and we can call this oratio recta, while indirect quotation adapts the words of the speaker or writer to the construction of the sentence. With an indirect statement, which I'll be covering in this video, that adapting will have the subject in the accusative case and the verb as an infinitive. And I'll touch upon how questions work in indirect discourse in Rule 88 and commands in Rule 89. An indirect statement is almost always introduced by a verb with a meaning around knowing, thinking, telling, and perceiving. And here's a list of the most common ones. But in reality, any verb that expresses thought, speech, or perception of any sort can introduce an indirect statement. And it's common to call these verbs head verbs because the action often originates in a person's head, and it's also the head or beginning of an indirect statement. The one exception to this rule is the verb inquam, I say, which is used outside of poetry for direct speech only. So, I'm going to use inquam to introduce a direct quotation so we can see how it works in indirect speech. Let's take a pretty basic phrase, like the opening of Virgil's Aeneid, and put it into our direct speech. Inquam arma virumque cano. I say, quote, I sing of arms and a man. Straightforward. But let's turn that into an indirect statement introduced by, well, let's say the verb nuntio, I announce. So first, we need to take the subject of the statement, and that's an understood ego, and express it in our new sentence in the accusative case. So our understood and unstated ego becomes a stated me. Then our verb cano becomes the infinitive canere. Nuntio me arma virumque canere. I announce that I am singing of arms and a man. Our direct statement might be Inquam liberato sum de metu. I say, I have been freed from fear. But if we wanted to make this statement indirectly with spero, I hope, we need to express our subject as the accusative me and make our verb liberato sum an infinitive. And note that liberatos changes to liberatum because the subject that governs its case is now in the accusative. Spero me liberatum esse de metu. I hope that I have been freed from fear. And that's Cicero's famous quote from Tusculans too, at least without the essay. In both of these examples, our direct speech subject was understood, but it's almost always going to be expressed in indirect speech. Inquit orator sum, he says, quote, I am an orator, but indirect speech would be dicit se esse oratorum. He says that he is an orator. Notice that we use the pronoun se to keep the same subject as the main verb, and we add it in. Also note that we change the case of orator from nominative, it's a predicate nominative, to the accusative case, so that it would agree in case with the subject accusative se. A couple more notes about the main clause in an indirect statement. Latin prefers to use the verb nego, I deny, instead of dico with a negative. So negant quid quam esse bonum, they say that nothing is good, and it's literally, they deny that anything is good. And we use negant instead of dicunt, like in dicunt nihil esse bonum. You can also find the head verb in the passive voice, and in this case, what would be the subject accusative often is the subject of that passive head verb. So bibulus audie or esse in Syria. Bibulus was heard to be in Syria where bibulus is the subject of our passive head verb audie bator. And this is found instead of something that would be translated like, it was heard that bibulus was in Syria, with bibulum as the subject accusative. So that's the first part of this rule. The main clause of an indirect statement uses the accusative plus infinitive construction. 
But what if that indirect statement contains a subordinate clause? The verb in that clause will be in the subjunctive mood. So let's get to some examples. Going back to our earlier sentence, negat quid quam esse bonum, they say, and that would be the Stoics, that nothing is good, the rest of the quote from Cicero is nisi quod honestum sit, nothing is good except that which is right. We have a relative clause inside an indirect statement, so instead of using an infinitive, we use the subjunctive for the verb sit. Here, let's compare this indirect statement to its direct form. In quunt, they say, quote, nihil est bonum, nisi quod honestum est. When we operate an indirect statement, this est in the relative clause becomes the subjunctive sit. In Virgil's Aeneid, fama, the monster rumor, sang, kaneebat, and there's our head verb, nisse aeneon, that Aeneas had come. And then we have a relative clause with its verb in the subjunctive, qui sepulcra viro dignator junger adido, to which man beautiful Dido deems herself worthy to join. Dignator is in the present subjunctive, it's a first conjugation verb, because it is the verb of a relative clause in an indirect statement. As usual, there are exceptions to this subordinate clause in indirect statement take the subjunctive rule, especially when the subordinate clause identifies a general accepted truth. But nevertheless, we can stick by rule number 86. The main clause of an indirect statement is an infinitive with a subject accusative, while all subordinate clauses take the subjunctive.